guys Shelby here welcome back to my channel today is a very exciting video so today I'm gonna to be talking about my favorite books that I read in 2021 so the all of these books have five stars um, I did not rate any of them because I just don't want to do that to myself because how can you pick a favorite like all of these I loved throughout the year and so we're just gonna be talking about them talking about my favorites yes and not like not all of these were published in the year 2021 so but these are just books that I read in the year 2021 so I don't have these in a particular order because like I said I did not want to like rank them because that just seemed way too hard and I just didn't want to do that so but I do think I'm going to start with I do have three books I think that are not romance so I'm going to do those first and get those out of the way because I am primarily a romance reader and the vast majority of my favorites are romances but like I said I have a couple a few that are not so I want to talk about those first so the first one is Empire of the Vampire by Jay Kristoff I love this one this one came out this year so I'm pretty proud of myself for actually reading a book that came out this year because I don't tend to do that I tend to procrastinate and get to things a lot later than when they're published but anyway so this is a huge chunker of a book but it is amazing this is a fantasy and this is about this guy who is a vampire hunter and in this world vampires have kind of become like the more dominant species and at the very beginning of this book our hero has killed the vampire king but he has been imprisoned and he is tasked with telling the vampires basically his story so it has somewhat of like an interview with the vampire kind of thing going on with it because it's him the rest of this book is just him real telling his life story and I love this this was like exactly what I was wanting in a vampire story that is not romance if I'm looking for usually with vampire stories I want some romance to it but if I sometimes I just want a nice like horror vampire-y gruesome kind of story and this just hit all the marks it was absolutely amazing and I think this is gonna have more books and I can't wait for them I'm so excited this just just this is amazing I loved it then we have strange the dreamer by Lainey Taylor so this is a YA fantasy that I read at the very beginning of the year and I absolutely loved it so this is about um, Laszlo Strange and he has become obsessed with this lost city. Um, he is wanting, he, like I said, he's absolutely obsessed with it. And he is wanting to try to find this city. And then one day, these travelers from that lost city actually come to try to um, bring people back. And so that they can kind of get supplies to their city so something happened that caused people to just absolutely forget about this city um and so like i said he has heard about this and he still somewhat remembers it and like i said he is obsessed with it and he wants to find this city and i loved this it was so good Laszlo is just a freaking sweetheart and he has such a special place in my heart he is such a like he reminded me of book lovers in just the way that he loves books and he loves knowledge and he just wants to find this place and help it out and I just I love this and then there's also another female character in this 
that I really thought was amazing too, but she's kind of more, you don't always know where she's at or what's going on with her. So, but this was so good. And I haven't read the second book of this series, but that is one that I, is definitely on my TBR for 2022 to finish because this, and it had such a cliffhanger at the end. I can't believe I've waited so long to read the next book in the series, but there we go. And another one is Untamed by Glennon Doyle. This is not even a fiction book. This is a memoir, I think. I'm really bad with like genres of for like nonfiction. But this is for, about Glennon Doyle. And she's basically talking about how she was married to her husband. And one day she realized how that she wasn't happy in her situation. And she ends up meeting a woman. And she falls in love with that woman where she previously thought she was straight. Um, and this is her kind of talking about how it was a hard decision to make to leave her husband. It wasn't something that people expected of her and how she basically talks in this book about how we should do things that in our soul make us happy and bring us joy even if it is a difficult decision if it's not the easiest thing to do and even if it goes against what your family or society says is the right thing to do or what you should be doing that you have to make those decisions for yourself because you are the only one that knows what makes you happy. So I absolutely love this. This is something, it's more along the lines of it had such an impact on me and it's something that I still think about and I just think about how courageous she is for doing that and you know doing something that she believes like what she believes in but then actually like putting forth that effort into making that a reality um and I just I really love that and it's something like I said I think about a lot and that I want to try to do for myself um is like I said just to do things that make me happy even if it's really hard to do at times so so all of the rest of these are romances and like I said I don't have these in any particular order I just really like them and they're my favorites so and I do have actual physical copies for all of these so I don't actually have like pictures to put up because I actually have the book to show you because I decided at the end of the year that I wanted to get physical copies of all of the books that I've given five stars to because I love them and I just wanted them to be on my shelves so so let's start with Hero by Lauren Rowe so this is the first book of a series I think it's the Morgan Brothers series because all the series is about all these brothers and so this one is about the oldest brother who is a firefighter and he gets injured on the job like pretty seriously injured so then he is at hospital and so this is about his recovery and um his physical therapist he starts to have feelings for and she is kind of like working with him trying to rehabilitate him and get him to be better but she is also a single mother um her husband I think he was a policeman and he got killed in the line of duty on on his job so there's a little bit of a struggle between these two characters because she even though she's starting to feel these things for her patient which is another reason why she doesn't necessarily want to get together with her with him because he is her patient and that's a big no-no um but she also since her husband died um she's afraid to get in that situation again 
where she's in love with somebody that could be killed on duty. So I know I'm not giving like a huge like summary synopsis of this because I did read this a long time ago, but I love this book so much. This one I love mostly because it had such an emotional impact on me um, because of what the hero does in this story. Uh, I mean, he's a firefighter. He saved, well, he, he saves lives. Um, I really enjoyed, so all of these books, the Morgan brothers have such a good connection to each other. Um, like their family dynamics is just so special to me. And they have, they're very funny too, which I thoroughly enjoyed. And then I also loved that she was a single parent. And so he wants to be involved with her children. Oh, I love that so much. So I, I love this one. I loved it so much. And I haven't continued on in the series, which I need to. That's something to work, that I'm going to work on for 2022 is to finish the rest of the books. This, if I can talk to finish the rest of the books in this series because this one was just out of the park it, I loved it it was so good then I'm going to be talking about kind of two books in one sort of so because both of these books came from the same series so I have A Lie for a Lie and then A Secret for a Secret by Helena Hunting and I, I think this is called the all in series maybe so these are about a um hockey players and this one is this hockey player he ends up going to like kind of like vacation and I think he goes to Alaska and he meets this girl while he's there and they start to have a relationship a sexual relationship and like they are just they fall so much in love with each other, but then they both have to go back to where they're from and they don't actually know each other's names to be able to contact each other. And, um, yeah, so they end up going their separate ways. And then later on, um, the heroine is pregnant and I think when they meet up again, I'm trying to remember if she's still pregnant or if she actually had their baby. I think she had their baby, but she didn't know who he was, had no way of contacting him. And so they end up running into each other again later on. And he finds out, Oh, I've got a kid. What? Like, I want to be a part of that. Um, so I just, this one, I gave five stars because again, the emotions that I felt for this, a lot of, especially with it being, there's a kid involved. Since I am a mother, I have found that books that involve children or like being pregnant or having a baby those books I tend to have a lot more like feelings towards and I tend to like those a lot more thus being like this book because <sighs> my child is just it's she's so special to me I love her so much so the fact that he wants to be a part of her this it's not a her I think it's a guy a boy um be a part of his child's life and he loves the heroine so and it's just I don't know I, this book was just so beautiful to me and I really loved it and then A Secret for a Secret which is the third book of the series so there's another hockey player this one I loved just because the hero is so freaking swoony so he ends up having a one night stand situation unknowingly with the his like manager I can't remember what the lingo is I think it's the manager of his hockey team with his daughter and so it's a little bit forbidden because he's not supposed to be with her but their relationship was just so freaking amazing 
and they have the best names ever because her name is Queenie and his nickname is King. So like King and Queen, it's just, uh, I don't know why that made me like just so like swoony over it, but I absolutely loved it. He is such a freaking sweetheart kind of hero, which I loved. I devoured this mostly based on him because he is one of my like top heroes ever in a romance story. I loved this so, so much. This was so good. And then we have Twisted Pride by Cora Riley. This is the third book of the Kimura Chronicles series. Now the second book of this series is a runner up because um, that one is about one of the Falcone brothers and he, his wife had been raped by her uncle. So that one had such an impact on me because the hero was so good to the heroine. So that one is a runner up. This one is about Remo. Yes, Remo Falcone, who is the capo of the Camorra of Las Vegas. And he ends up stealing Serafina. Yes, Serafina to be his bride. Um, she is supposed to get married. She is from the outfit, I think. So in this whole world, there is the, um, the Camorra, which is the mafia of Las Vegas, the outfit, and then the Familia. The outfit is based in Chicago and the Familia is based in New York. And all of these groups don't tend to get along with each other. They kind of form alliances here and there between one another. So, like, in Cora Riley, she has another series prior to this, which is, like, the Bound, Bound series or something. And it's more primarily about the outfit and the familia. And they do, in that series, kind of make some um, ties and relations and bonds. But the Kimura, like I said is in Las Vegas and they absolutely hate both the outfit and the, and the familia. Um, and Remo, like I said, is the capo. He is in charge and he is wanting to take down both the outfit and familia because he hates them for some of the things that they did to him and his brothers in the past. And then he's also just wanting to be very protective of his family. It's kind of that, Almost that situation where that like I hate every everyone but you kind of trope except for him it's he hates everybody except his brothers and then Serafina who he starts to fall in love with after he captures her. So like I said she's supposed to get married and he th knows that it's going to um, disrupt them and he can have leverage over them by stealing Serafina on her wedding day. And this was just, this is so good. I'm going to say that about all of these and I'm sorry, but it's true because they are so good. Um, so he starts to fall in love with Serafina and vice versa. And I, I loved seeing that. how this author made you fall in love with this character who has previously be just been seen even though this whole series is from this the Kimura and they're seen as like the good guys in this series Remo is still kind of that villainous character um and I just loved seeing that turn of how he becomes more of a hero and how he starts to fall in love with Serafina and starts to care for her. And oh, I absolutely love this book. It was so good. Then we have Culty by Mariana Zapata. I can't believe it's taking me so long to read this book. 
but it was so good. I so worth all the hype that it gets. Um, so this is another like sports romance. This is a age gap romance. This is about our heroine who is a professional soccer player and she, there is a, um, men's professional soccer player that she has idolized all her life that she loves watching him play he is her favorite 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 character or player ever and he actually becomes the a coach for the team that she is playing and it's kind of one of those situations where once you meet the person that you idealize then you kind of stop doing it after you meet them in reality because they don't actually live up to the hype in reality. So like I said, she's idealized this guy forever. She absolutely loves him. And then she meets him and he's a bit, he's a big jerk and he's like mean to her father and he's just all around, all around, and all around kind of asshole and so she's like no so she hates him but then they start working together a lot more and they become more like friends and then it develops more into romance so this is a definitely a slow burn romance which I'm usually not a fan of but just I loved with this one watching how their relationship develops so it goes from um you know like I said she idolizes him and loves him from afar until she meets him and then it becomes more of like an enemies hate kind of situation they do not like each other and then that develops into they get to know the more that they work with each other the more they get to know each other and becomes more of a friend situation that then finally develops into a romantic situation and I just loved seeing that development and I think I don't know how else Mary, Mariana Zapata could have done it but except to make it a slow process so if you like can stick with it I just think it was just so worth it in the end for the, when these two characters finally got together and just how I became so invested in these characters because I have journeyed with them through so much together. To have that at the end was just so satisfying and I loved it. It was so good. And I thought it was really cool because I actually haven't read any... Um, like sports romances where like the heroine the heroine was in sports so I thought that was really neat too so I love this and I am now a Mariana Zapata fan so and I need to read more books from her then we have Then Came You by Lisa Claypus everybody talks about the second book in the series which I haven't read yet but this one I loved it so much. Um, so this is about our heroine and she is very much a independent woman, very free spirited. She does what she wants, doesn't really care about what anybody thinks of her. And she has decided because her, I think it's her younger sister is supposed to get married to this guy who is very much seen as like a curmudgeon -y kind of character. Um, he's, people view him as being like really mean and she just does not think that he would be a very good husband to her younger sister. So she wants to stop this marriage from happening. And so she goes to like I think the um her sister and this guy and their family are kind of having these like meetings to possibly lead up to them getting married and so she decides to go along and try to intervene in these and try to 
get her sister to see that he is not a good match and then also get him to see that he does not want to marry her sister and then they start to have a romance and it's just absolutely fabulous i love this i loved the two characters together this is one of my like favorite heroines probably of all time especially in historical romances because i loved how she did not care what society thought whatsoever she was gonna do what she wanted and that's that kind of thing but then she is also um she does from a prior relationship have a child and she doesn't ha not have that child anymore and she is trying to find her child whether her child has passed away or is just merely missing so that is also somewhat what motivates her character so like i said if any book has something with a character having a child or something along those lines it suddenly just became more after having my own child um, those books seem to have more of an impact on me and more of an emotional kind of response and I feel more of a t an attachment to like those characters in those books so I think that's also part of why I really love this because of that plot that was going on with it but then like I said I just love this heroine and I really, really loved the dynamic and the, um, the tension, the attraction of the two main characters. And this one was just, this one was fabulous. And I need to read the second one because I've heard that one's really good too. So, but this one, more people need to read the first book of this one because it's just, it's so good. And I loved it. Then I have, this is my physical copy. These are like um, three books in one, but I'm specifically mentioning the first two books. So um, this is a bind up for the Deliver Us series uh, or the Deliver series. And then she's got like, it's like a nine book series and she's got like two more of these bind ups. But this one has the first two books or first three books and the first two books are on my favorites list because they're so amazing um so the first one is deliver and the second one is vanquish so these books are very 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 dark romances they deal with um sexual trafficking so our first book is about our heroine who has become a trafficker after being captured herself and she is decide has decided to take this guy who is like a college athlete all around good guy and she has taken him and is training him to become a sex slave so that she can sell him to, to a buyer and this was just, this was so good. Like I said, it's a very dark, dark romance. I love this first one because of how it is such a difficult situation for the heroine to be in. Because you then you find out why she is doing the things that she is doing. And I loved how the hero was able to see through her and see some of the things like how she is feeling and is able to break down some of her walls and how they just built so much like love and trust for each other in this absolutely terrible situation that they are in and I just I loved it and then the second one Vanquish is about um her partner and he in the first one is kind of the bad guy. 
And so in the second one, he is wanting to get the heroine back from the first book because he thinks he's in love with her. But he ends up coming across this girl who is a recluse. Um, she has lots of like mental um, disorders. Um, she is agoraphobic, so she hasn't left her house. She has anxiety, she has OCD, and she also has an eating disorder. And so she, he comes across her and for whatever reason, he kind of becomes attached to her and he decides to kidnap her, basically. But I love Vanquish so much because in my mind, it kind of helps. It's one of, again, where we get to redeem that villainous character and he kind of turns around and I just, I love these two characters together because I felt like they both are able to, had they not met each other and gotten to the situation that they got into, they wouldn't have become better people for it. Like the two of them helped to, helped each other out. He was helping her with overcoming some a lot of her fears and disorders, and then he, she was helping him with becoming a better person and dealing with some of the trauma from his past. And I just I loved it so much. So, like I said, these are very very dark romances. There is um, like dubious consent. Um, there are some scenes in both of these books that are hard to read, but they get five stars because of the amount of emotions that I had while reading these and how much I felt for these characters in these two books. So I just, I absolutely love them. And then my last two books that are on my favorites for the year of 2022, 2021 are going to be, uh, which I just, I'm gonna saving these for last because I like, these are the books that I read most recently, are going to be Sinner and Saint. So Sinner is the second book of the pre-series and Saint is the third book of the pre-series. Um, like I said, I just read these not too long ago. These are like some of the last books that I read for 2021. Um, this whole series is about these brothers and it's basically how they are dealing with the aftermath um, and the impact of their sister committing suicide. Um, and like I said, it's just about how they are coping later on in their lives. So Sinner is about the oldest brother and he has decided to basically turn to a life of sin to cope with his his sister's passing. Um, he is he decides to forgo religion altogether. Um, he turns his back on his faith and religion. He doesn't believe in it anymore. And he is a like playboy kind of character. And he one day meets or meets again, I guess, his best friend's younger sister. It's been years since he's seen her. And now that he's seeing her, she is an adult and he has this immediate attraction towards her. But he feels like he can't be with her, one, because it's his best friend's little sister. He's like, that's, she's off limits. I can't do that. And my best friend will kill me. And then two, she is in the training, like, process of becoming a nun. So there are some tension there because she obviously has, is very devout, um, and really believes in her faith and her faith is something that's very important to her and he is like the exact opposite he doesn't 
believe in God anymore and he doesn't believe in, in you know, their religion. Um, but she comes to him because before she actually finally takes her official vows to become a nun, she is wanting to kind of experience things that she hasn't experienced before and that she knows if she does become a nun, she will never be able to experience these things ever again. Um, the biggest thing being sex. She is a virgin. She has never had sex. And so she has no way of knowing of what she's giving up. So she comes to him to ask him to take her virginity and um, teach her about sex so that she feels she can have the most accurate, to, to be able to make the best decision. And she knows exactly what she's giving up and what she's giving it up for. And in the meantime, these two characters fall in love and it's absolutely beautiful. Um, this is on my list because it has such an emotional impact. I love Sierra Simone and how she writes such emotional books. There is also a scene that is very emotional in here um, with the death of a family member. And it has such an impact on me because I work in a hospital and I see death every day. And I think how Sierra Simone handled this situation was pretty accurate to at least how I've seen things happen like this in the hospital. And I just, and I loved how these two characters are coming to terms with loving each other and then how they're going to come to a decision about what they want to do. And I just, I loved it. And then we have Saint, which is about another brother. And he, this is a like second chance romance. Um, he was dating this guy who actually was this guy's best friend. And he was also kind of a playboy, businessman, did what he wanted kind of thing. And then one day something, something happens and he decides that he's going to give everything up and he doesn't want the life he has anymore and he wants to become a monk and he wants to devote his life to God and his religion. But so he's made that decision and he's kind of going through this process of becoming a monk. And then one day his ex-boyfriend shows up and his ex-boyfriend is a writer and is wanting to write about his, I don't remember what it's called, like sect or this the group that he's with, the group of monks that he's with, because they, um, they make beer to help kind of like raise money for their charities and for their daily living and kind of that kind of thing. So he's there to like write an article about it and they start to kind of rekindle their romance. And the um, ex-boyfriend starts to find out what happened to make him want to turn to religion in his life. So this does have some trigger warnings to it. Um, the biggest being like depression and some um, like suicidal ideations. And again it's very similar to Sinner. This just had such an emotional impact to me um, and something that I'm definitely going to continue thinking about. I just I loved the two characters and how much they both like truly loved each other and they still love each other. This was just, is so good. And I absolutely loved it. So there we are, everyone. Those are my favorite books that I read in 2021. And I just, I can't gush about them enough. They, I love them so much. 
and yeah so make sure you leave a comment down below on what your favorite rom or not specifically romances but just in general your favorite books are for 2021 make sure you hit the thumbs up button if you like this video and I'm just I'm so excited to see next year what my favorite books are for 2022 <sighs> It just, it makes me so happy reading books and loving books and talking about books. It's just, it's so wonderful. But yeah. So, and then also make sure you hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. So you, that you can see more videos from me. And I look forward to seeing you all in the next one. Bye guys.